Simpson's paradox is a classical example of a regression misleading interpretation. In this graph, looking at the overall data, we see a positive correlation between daily exercise and junk food consumption. The more exercise, the more junk food consumption. On the other hand, looking at the edge subgroups, it seems the correlation is negative in each one of them. How could negative correlation of each individual subgroup become positive when subgroups are compounded? This effect, when we compound data from several populations, is known as Simpson's paradox. We will analyze this effect with Microsoft Excel. Download Excel file Simpson from OneDrive to your PC to run this analysis. In our process, we know there is a correlation between input variable x and output y. So we try a linear regression between the two with Excel. We select columns x and y in the table and select a scatter chart. We enter a linear trend option. And we will get the scatter chart with the regression line and r squared. We notice that the approximation of this line is very poor, and this is confirmed by a low r square value of 0.4. The slope of the line shows a positive correlation between x and y. It is obvious that this simple mathematical model might not be acceptable due to the low r square. Only 40% of the variation in y is explained by the model. In the graph, we can see four clearly differentiated groups of data, which in this example correspond to another attribute factor, which we will call g. In this case, the attribute was collected together with the data. The timestamp, for instance, may have been co collected automatically. g might be the shift, machine, operator, day of the week, etc. It is obvious by looking at the data that output y is affected by g as well as x. Since we can discriminate the data with factor g, we will analyze now each group separately with their regression. We obtain different regression equations for each group g, and the r squared of 0.7 indicates the model is much better than the group data that was 0.4. The other thing we notice is that the slopes of the regression lines are all negative, as opposed to the group data. This is what Simpson's paradox is about. We get a different result analyzing the group separately and the grouped data. Another thing we notice analyzing the compound graph is that x values for each group are significantly different. Let us check that by making histograms of the x values for each one of the groups. We will need to understand why these x inputs are different for each group. This is a real example. A study of gender bias among graduate school admissions to University of California, Berkeley. When comparing proportions, we need to take into account the sample size. For these reasons, we have computed the 95% confidence intervals in order to see if differences in proportion are statistically significant. Looking at these intervals, it is clear that overall proportion of admission for men is significantly higher than for women. In department A, proportion of admission for women is higher than for men. In all other departments, there is no significant difference in the proportions of admissions for men and women. The research paper by Michael concluded that women tended to apply to more competitive departments with lower rates of admission, even among qualified applicants, such as in the English department whereas men tended to apply to less competitive departments with higher rates of admission, such as in the engineering department. So the conclusion in this case 
is that compounding data from the different departments makes no sense. There are other factors to consider. Competitiveness of the different departments' rates of admission and preferences of the students. In this video, Dr. Trevor Brissett shows the case of early COVID-19 statistics comparing Italy and China fatality rates. We notice that the total fatality rates of Italy were double those of China. But if we compare by age group, we notice that Italy's rates were always lower than China's. How can we explain this contradiction? The explanation comes from the age distribution of these two populations. We notice that Italy's are very different to China's. More older people, greater than 70 in Italy, and more younger people, less than 60 in China. We know that fatality rates are higher in older people, so the higher fatality rate is explained by the age de demographics of both countries. This is another example of Simpson's paradox, where compounding data, in this case of different age groups, gives a misleading result. These are some conclusions. The relation between two factors might be significantly affected by other factors we haven't considered. Compounding data from different populations could lead to misleading in conclusions. Sample size is essential to interpret if statistical results are significant. Statistics can't replace deep process knowledge. It can just help to understand it better. Looking for a statistic that says what I want to hear is not always right. You can see this article in Polyedrica Blogspot.